UFO Woman Show at Home Edition. I am your host, Melissa Kennedy. So for weeks now, we've been talking about disclosure, we've been talking about universal consciousness, and how we can learn and raise ourselves up to the level of our extraterrestrial and intergalactic family. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how uh, disclosure may happen uh, in the near future, in particular ET disclosure. And we have found a video uh, on the internet where a uh, lady was actually talking about possible ET disclosure with Trump in 2021. So I would like to show uh, that video and then our panel is going to discuss it in further detail and what our thoughts and our ideas are on this subject matter with ET disclosure. So John, let's go ahead and roll that video, please. Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna do a video because I did a journey yesterday and um, I'm uh, gonna share, share with you all. Um, I just went off. Um, I must have been bored. <laughs> so I went traveling and ended up outside of the experiment. And um, who was there was uh, Donald Trump's consciousness. And it gave me a key. And this key led me to um, the famous room in the White House and a drawer and a file. And this file was called The End of Days. And um, in this file um, was information on um, information on contracts with ETs, reptilians, and greys to experiment on the American public. And um, he wants this out um, in 2021. Um, he wants to expose. So basically, he he's going to bring um, ET exposure. Uh, that's his intention the next year when he gets in. Um, he said this is a continuation of what JFK was trying to do. Um, and these contracts were made in 1950, I think he said. Um, so he wants to expose all that. His life is very still under danger. There's a lot going on in his emotional life, personal life. Um, he's having a really hard time. Um, I saw him um, was it winning the election and I also saw a serious attempt on his life after he gets in. Now he will survive it and I don't think they even hit him but the, the serious attempt is will be, everyone will see it. Um, it's like going to be on TV. Um, but he will be fine. Um, there is going to be like real bumpy rise for the American people economically. Um, um, uh, civil unrest basically um, I saw lots but what I did see that there's huge light at the end of the tunnel that there's going to be um, I saw Hillary and George Soros which you know from if you listen to the my YouTube videos um, they're not real people they're not real people in those bodies they're computer um, AI and basically I've see, seen them like diminished just go just disappear kind of thing and um, I also um, just saw light just all this because it was just all like civil unrest and fires and just darkness and then it all just turned to light like a switch which I've seen before in other journeys when the matrix really just comes down there's a switch and it just turns gorgeous so um, there is a bumpy ride and it seems that America is the one that's going to have the more of a it's a bee. Uh, it's good that I'm not a wimp. Um, the more of a harder time. And basically what um, the, is that the advice is that we need to listen to our hearts. Now what I've seen since the whole virus has kicked off, we can either be connect with our hearts and in our hearts that connects to Gaia. And Gaia is happy she's um it's there's no sort of stress there's like things going in the right direction but also to listen to yourself and be where you need to be at that certain time and um, if people go into fear mode and listen to the media and everything like that um that it's it's not going to help them that they need to keep, connect with ourselves and that's been right from the beginning this virus people need to open up their hearts and connect to who they are um and they will be fine 
absolutely fine. Um, what else? Um, there was another operation going under California, which we saw on a journey yesterday, where money was being transported. Basically, the um, military, Hillary, um, involved of basically stealing the money of um, the American people. And they were taking it to an island, um, which was a base for it. And then I need to investigate it more. But it seemed like no one knew about this island. It's not like well known to the public or anything. It's like being deleted off the maps and um, used as a financial basis of stealing and then um, and I'm going to do more on this because it's um, where the money's going to what it's being used for and stuff like that but Trump is aware of this as well because basically there's underground like tunnels there's like an underground like base which they're stealing all this money or well, they're using it as a but I saw Trump coming in and stopping it that man's a busy man um yeah i think that's it um and um yeah okay i'll leave you there <laughs> okay thanks for listening you take care bye well i find that very interesting because you know we've been talking about uh what it could possibly mean to have et disclosure i myself have had a few visions very similar to what this lady was talking about and so i, I think the time is now for us to not only bring forth uh information about ufos but certainly uh our extraterrestrial friends and family that are out there and how Really, at this time uh, in this history of the world, I think we probably need something that is hopeful and good and positive and uh, get our mindsets out of the current <laughs> negative mindset and more to something positive. So I'm going to open it up to our panel. I've got uh, three other people joining us today. Our usual uh, suspects, which is Kevin and Edgar. And then we have Barry Gaunt, a uh, dear friend and colleague uh, in the UFO and paranormal community. Good morning, guys. How are you guys? Fine morning. We're good. 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 How are you well, doing this morning? This is our at home edition. <laughs> So, Kevin, I'm going to start with you because you're the one that, that shared the video with us, and I'm so glad you did. Very thankful for that. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Kevin? Just out of the shoot here, what do you think about this video? Okay, well, it really ties in with uh, uh, the information that I've been given by my ETs. Uh, and it was interesting that my brother sent me that particular clip, and I watched it, and I sort of identified with it straight away. Uh, a... Um, a couple of years ago, I was actually asked to contact uh, uh, the president himself at, at the White House by my e my ETs. Uh, initially, I was asked to contact uh, our United Nations in relation to a mandate protocol, which I did. I contacted uh, the chairman of the Outer Space Affairs Committee, Nicholas Hedman. I did receive a reply, and uh, he did say that there was no protocol in place uh, should ex advance extra still wish to communicate and connect with our governments. Uh, I asked him how we would implement such a mandate, and he said that uh, we would have to get a member state to make that mandate proposal uh, for a vote on that. So uh, that's about as far as I got with that. Uh, but uh, uh, then the, uh, uh, my particular ETs asked me to contact the president and ask him directly, and I was very reluctant to do that. Uh, you know, it took me about two weeks to really get my head around it. And I decided to write to him, uh, outlining the, the request for this mandate protocol so the group of eight ETs can, uh, uh, their ambassadors can meet with our amb ambassadors here on Earth. And that was in July 29, 2018, my first letter. And then uh, I was asked again by Ra, the lead counsel of the group of eight. He uh, contacted me one Sunday morning, I'd just woken up. And uh, he asked me to contact the president again and follow up. And he also told me that the president didn't receive the first, or didn't read the first letter. Uh, so uh, I sent a second letter outlining that. I included a copy of the first letter, a copy of my correspondence to the United Nations, and uh, mailed it off uh, with the same request again. I did get a receipt from the White House to say that they had received the letter. Now, whether he's read it or not, I don't know. And I also included a letter from uh, Dr. Greer, 
the one that he put out there as well. So all the information was there, the request has been made, and then I see this uh, uh, short video from Rebecca from the Find the Light, and she has a Facebook page for those that are interested to follow her. She has, uh, I think, about 4,000 views on that particular video. So that's quite an interest there. And there are many groups working towards this, but it's it seems uh, uh, unusual, but uh, she's getting the same information. Only hers has moved forward into the future, and uh, it would tie in really with the information that I've been given. And March the 2021 would be, uh, I like the numbers, 2121. It's a universal number again. Uh, so uh, uh, it will be something to work towards and wouldn't be fascinating. Uh, I know we uh, we all know that the ETs are here. We don't need evidence. We know that. Uh, there are many, many now in our uh, planet that, that know the ETs are here. But we need to get it recognized by our governments. And they've been uh, denying this knowledge for decades. So, And my ETs did tell me that the uh, disclosure would come from the people. And, it, and they will be contacting more individuals. And perhaps this Rebecca is one of those individuals. So, yeah, exciting times ahead. And let's see where this develops. Well, before we go any further, I have to mention Kevin's in a spaceship. <laughs> and I love his background. <laughs> oh, Kevin, you are always a, a barrel of laughs, my friend. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, Edgar, what's your take on this video? Well, I think she was spot on on the uh, as far as her analogies and her uh, insight intuitions, because uh, the uh, we are the disclosure, and uh, they uh, told us that uh, straight out that uh, or told me straight out that we it is up to us to get the information out, and that, because the governments have lied and uh, have been uh, very deceitful to the uh, intergalactics, uh, bringing us their technologies and stuff, and that their technologies is being used against us as a human race and even as a planet uh, as a whole. And that it's time for us to uh, get the information out, be downloaded the information, and start using the information that they're giving us because it's the only way that we're going to save humanity. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, and I've been getting uh, very similar downloads and visions myself. Um, in fact, I remember a real vivid one that happened back in February at 3.33 a.m. And uh, they, they said, you know, Melissa, you got to get prepared physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, and spiritually because they, they forewarned me. I had a battle ahead of me and I had a lot of uh, things that were going to present themselves that I needed to be involved in, which is exactly what's happened. <laughs> um, and, you know, I didn't know what it meant at the time, but I, I have been trying to do that. I've been trying to prepare myself for a lot of these things. And you're right, Edgar. I mean, now's the time all, all of us are being uh, given information, uh, downloaded, uh, we're being guided. Uh, because I do think it's going to come from the people, and uh, that's a good thing. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing because when the people have a voice and the people take action, usually what happens is something good comes out of it, and I'm certainly hoping that that's the case here, and uh, you know, this doesn't turn into a kind of a violent type thing, uh, but rather a peaceful uh, movement, and we... You know, we collectively, as the human race, uh, take into account that there are others uh, out there in the universe that are like-minded, that are peaceful, and uh, they're here to help our planet because our planet needs help at the moment. And I, I hope that that's in indeed the case. Now, Barry, I, I hope your audio is working, my friend. I don't know. Say something. I know we were having some technical difficulties. <laughs> I hope it's working, too. Uh, it is. I don't know what we uh, got here. Okay. I hope the Zoom gods are all in a line uh, for this. So. Uh, I apologize if everybody is, if I'm just mouthing it right now. So. <laughs> So what do you think uh, about ETs and, and disclosure? Do you think that that's a good thing? Do you think that that should come from the president? What, what are your thoughts on that, Barry? Uh, well, let me go back to the video, first of all, okay? The video I find very interesting. 
uh, because it speaks of her when she talks about contracts and she talks about the things that the government has taught, done in the past, which is actually a true basis based on several of the things that have happened uh, in the past from 1953 to 1954 with the Eisenhower, the uh, uh, Grenada, um treaty program, and that's basically what she's mentioning that she's talking about, I think, when she first talks about it, is that we have had alien intervention since the 1950s, and it's continued since then uh, at uh, certain Air Force bases, could have been at uh, uh, Holloman, uh, Edwards, Homestead, uh, all the way from the 50s, 54, the treaty was supposed to be signed in 54, and gone all the way through uh, 1971. I think the last one that I've seen is someone that mentioned that there was another meeting uh, that was filmed and the producer was able to, was actually offered that for a show. Um, but going into the ET disclosure part of it, um, I don't think the government is going to ever disclose it. You know, if they do disclose it, it comes with an agenda. Uh, just kind of like what we're seeing right now with um, a certain UFO group. And as we see it, it comes with this agenda that says it's the alien threat, that they are a problem and they're this way and everything else. Now, when I mentioned going back into that area of the treaty end of it, obviously the treaty was broken. Several different people said that uh, the ETs were not, um, too, too nice of uh, things, and they started abducting, they were only supposed to abduct a few and give us information, the government, that kind of information on who they were abducting and all that, uh, where and so forth. But uh, the government finds out that they had upped the scale tremendously, and uh, some of the people weren't coming back, and some of the people uh, were... Uh, they were in the millions. It was in the millions of uh, abductees. So uh, they kind of broke that treaty. Uh, but going back to disclosure again, when I say that, uh, it, I think it's going to be up to the abductees themselves. Uh, if they all get together in a group and they all, I think every abductee has a piece of the puzzle. Um, and, you know, you talk about downloads, you talk about all this stuff. Those are the people that if you get all together and they decide to work all together, then you're going to find the answers. Uh, and and that, that's where you're going to get disclosure. Everything from anything else with disclosure is going to have to be tainted in, because the government cannot. I mean, what you talk about an uprising, do you want to be known that the government lied to you for 50 years and all the terrible things that they've done to you? Do you know what's going to happen? You think there's rioting in the streets now? <laughs> think about the rioting that they're going to be that. <laughs> that is a good point, and I think that's part of the reason um, that it hasn't happened yet. You know, it, I talked about this a little bit last week. You, this is all a lot trickier than we probably realize because, as you're saying, first of all, they're going to have to basically admit that they have lied to us for the last 80 years. Second of all, who wants to be that guy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, who wants to be the guy that goes down in history as uh, the one that spilled the beans? Although, you could look at that from a different light and be like, well, I'm the guy that disclosed, you know, all of this universal knowledge about ETs. I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. Um, third, I think uh, our mindset has to be, and I think we're getting there, though, but I think our mindset has to be a little bit different. We, we've been very uh, controlled with our, our information and with our thought processes through uh, our education system, through our religions, through our culture. I mean, all of that has really downplayed any life on other planets. And in fact, actually made it taboo and actually made anybody that talked about it crazy. That's the label that they were given. Um, so we got to get away from the tinfoil hat image, you know, from the 50s that's been kind of, you know, engraved in our minds as to anybody that studies or thinks UFOs exist, they're nuts. So that's a really hard thing to get out of people's minds. I, I think that's a lot harder than, than some realize. Um, because this goes back to, you know, images that we had as children 
and and thought processes you know our parents our grandparents all taught us that you know that doesn't exist or you know when you were a little kid you know we would say we there was monsters in the closet or under our bed or whatever i mean who's to say that that wasn't paranormal activity but as soon as we mentioned it to our parents what did they tell us oh there's no such thing as monsters you're just making it up right <laughs> so you know it, it's it's kind of getting out of a um one track mind really and, and getting us into a more open mindset and I don't think that's real easy. I, I think we're leaning that way now more than ever, but uh, you, you got a lot of factors that play into it. And uh, what I'm seeing um, a real good example of this is right now with the pandemic. I mean, you got this group over here that believes this, and you got this group over here that believes that, and you're not going to sway people's minds too much from one group to the other. It, it's almost impossible. And it, it's proven to me how easy it is to brainwash people. That's what it says to me. And, and so when you take two and three generations of people that have been brainwashed to think a certain way, I, I think it's going to take two or three generations or maybe more uh, to get us to the mindset of actually accepting and encouraging knowledge about intergalactics. That's just my opinion. But um no, I think you're right, Barry. I think there's a lot to this. And, uh, you know, whether it's Trump or, or whatever, but, um, you know, I, I think that it's going to take a lot more than just a press release. I don't think this is like, you know how last year in September of 2019, they they dropped a little bomb over here saying, oh yeah, that, that probably, you know, that was probably not of this world. And, you know, they, they just... They kind of sugar-coated it and padded it really nicely and put a little ribbon around it. But it really wasn't like, I don't know, it really wasn't what I wanted. I wanted a lot more than just what they gave us in September of last year uh, about the whole UFO thing uh, with the military footage. It was nice that there was a little bit of acknowledgement, but it's like, you just teased me with that. <laughs> showed me the trailer i want the whole movie you know um but anyway i i don't know i mean if, if it were to happen in 2021 how do you guys think it'll go down kevin i'm gonna start with you my friend how do you think that would actually happen well i think that obviously the ets are looking to uh, um connect with our ambassadors here with their ambassadors uh, as we would with any country uh, here on our own planet. We have meetings uh, with uh, different countries, with their ambassadors, and it's no different with the ETs, other than they come from another planet or another dimension or uh, wherever they come from. But the process is the same. We meet, we talk, we discuss, uh, we compromise, and uh, uh, usually when uh, groups come together, uh, we share information, and I know that the ETs that I speak with are quite willing to share many of their technologies to help with the problems we have with our planet. It's uh, uh, very heavily polluted at the moment. They can assist us with that. They can assist us with uh, uh, technologies, uh, which will help our lifestyle, which will help us become integrated. We will develop uh, spiritually uh, further than we are at the moment and have an understanding of consciousness. I know that we here, we all talk about the uh, different UFO groups that we're all members of, and we all speak within these groups to one another. And there are many, and I speak to them myself, as I'm sure we all do. Uh, but beyond the UFO groups are the spiritual groups, and they are huge, absolutely huge. Uh, uh, I mean, one of the leaders we have here in the Western world is Deepak Chopra, and he has a huge following. Millions of people follow him, and he speaks about the ETs openly because it's an extension of our spirituality. It's who we are. It's a way of communicating. Uh, one of his good friends, Alan Steinfeld, he promotes it and has been doing so for over uh, most of his life, I think. And uh, Alan actually uh, was the one that uh, nominated me to speak at the United Nations Enlightenment Society. And I know that Alan has his own contact with his own ETs. Uh, I met Alan at a conference uh, a year or so ago. Uh, so there are many, not just on the UFO side, uh, but the spiritual side as well. So and when we all get together and we all share this information, then that's where uh, it becomes uh, 
um, open to everybody to understand it. And for once, Melissa, I'm going to disagree with you. I normally agree with you, but on this occasion, I'm going to disagree. I think when people get the information and it's reliable information, they will change their opinions. And I have an example of that with my good friend, Mash. He was a skeptic all his life. He's retired like me now, retired detective. And uh, he uh, didn't believe anything at all. Uh, he just thought it was all just people's imagination. He had no idea about the spiritual world. He had no idea about the ETs. And he was here on vacation, staying at my home. And I went to the I asked him if he wanted a beer, which was a silly question. He said, yes. I went to the uh, fridge to get a beer. And I said to my ET guides, now will be a good time to show him a craft. So I went outside with the two beers. I put them down. I sat down. A craft appeared immediately, and it flew directly behind our home. Uh, it moved quickly in such a speed and direction, it could only be interpreted as a craft. And it was only about five or 600 feet away. He saw it. He was absolutely amazed by it. There were four of us sat there, his wife, myself, and my wife. And from that one uh, encounter, it changed his whole perspective. And I suspect I agree with you, Melissa, in relation to it's very difficult to change people's minds and opinions once they're set by their lifelong education, as it were, to change. But on this uh, uh, occasion, my friend Marsh, his uh, uh, opinion changed overnight. Now he talks about the ETs. He does his own research. And then he, he saw he took some photographs of the full moon and there were some orbs there. Well, orbs come with the ETs opening up a portal to watchers and seers. They were then in, uh, including him. So uh, and now we have conversations about the ETs and uh, and the UFO. So it, it, it's uh, we are moving forward. And I know this uh, lady Rebecca in the, uh, from the Find the Light. She said that she saw darkness. And the darkness was the writing, the fires. But then, beyond that, she saw the light. The darkness stopped, the fires, uh, the fighting. Uh, and that's what my ETs tell me. There, is a, uh, there will be a period of upheaval, and we will come out the other side. Uh, to, they didn't say the light, but I would use her words and come forward, move forward through the dark to the light. So uh, I think very exciting heads, uh, times ahead for... Uh, humanity for our, our species so yeah well never mind me just dropping rocks over here i <laughs> had a i was fiddling with an amethyst uh, crystal and it jumped out of my hand and fell onto the floor so if you heard a noise that would be me playing with my rocks <laughs> so Anyway, well, I, I love the fact that your friend did uh, change his mind. Um, I unfortunately have not seen too much of that. Uh, I have a friend who is um, very much of the Christian faith, and despite my numerous uh, personal stories I've shared, still doesn't believe, still doesn't, you know, just even though it's firsthand, you know, account information I witnessed from myself, uh, still doesn't, doesn't believe whatsoever in paranormal UFOs or ETs, just doesn't believe in it whatsoever. Um, I still love her, but uh, she'll, she'll never, ever agree or change her mind on that. I just don't think she will. Um, and then, of course, you know, the whole pandemic thing. I mean, people are giving or being given facts that you know it's 0.0002% that you will die from coronavirus but yet 99% of the people walk around with face masks even though the facts are in their face they don't want to believe it so i don't know i mean i i think maybe some people might be um easily you know uh switched but i think a lot of people I don't know. I don't know. They just don't want to believe. They, they don't want to admit that they've uh, believed wrongly, uh, that they've been foolish, maybe. I don't know. I think, I think it just is a case-by-case -case thing. Um, sometimes when you have a personal experience, uh, it can definitely wake up you know, your, your mindset and change your thought process. Uh, oftentimes, if, you know, if, if you're listening to someone's firsthand account, they, for whatever reason, they're still going to be skeptical. Um, I don't know. It, <laughs> it'll, it, it's yet to be seen. Let's put it that way. That's going to be something we're going to have to stay tuned for because I think it's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, 
but hopefully over time that that will change now you mentioned that you know you think that uh, we're gonna have to go through some more darkness in order to get to the light I have heard and I forget who I heard this from but maybe Edgar maybe you can remember I heard somebody say that December 21st something magnificent was going to happen some sort of a you know light provoking awakening something wonderful is supposed to happen I, I have no idea what that is but uh, have any of you heard anything like that can't hear you Barry <laughs> We've lost Barry. I myself, I'm sorry, uh, I myself have not heard anything like that at all. Uh, you hear so many different things. We've heard, uh, you know, there are a lot of psychic input that comes in and a lot of different things. And, um, you know, it's kind of like wait and see. Uh, there are certain times that I feel the energy shift here. And uh, it's not that everybody else is going to feel that or some things that happen. But uh, when it does shift, uh, you can definitely tell that right now there is a negative energy that's out here that I feel very strongly. And I hope that uh, December 21st, if that's the that time of it, that it will yeah. uh, it definitely change. You know, so. It kind of reminds me, you remember uh, when a few years ago when they had the Mayan calendar prediction and they were like, the world's right. going to end and all that. Remember? Remember? And they had like a specific date. Um, Edgar, you, you know a lot about the Mayan calendar. Uh, we were a little bit off in our calculations, weren't we? Yeah, by a number of years, almost like uh, 15, 16 years off. The uh, And yes, uh, that was a psychic medium that was talking about that. And that's the winter solstice, that yeah, uh, right. there's supposed to be a major shift in the energy fields. Yeah, that's what she said. She said uh, December 21st. Boy, I hope they're right. Uh, but, you know, I, I've got to say uh, some of the stuff that I'm seeing actually just yesterday on the news uh, from different places around the world, uh, the Canadian uh, prime minister or president or whatever, uh, he was like, oh, you know, this is like the second wave, blah, blah, blah. Thanksgiving's going to be ruined. Maybe there's hope for Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, geez, yeah. that's like doomsday 101. Um I, I don't know. You know, there's just there's so much propaganda, so much fear mongering going on that I'm hoping that um, you know, if, if the ET here's a question, and I've wondered about this for a while. If the ETs um, communicate telepathically, which we know they do, is there not a way to change globally mindsets telepathically? Could the ETs do something like that? Who wants to answer that question? <laughs> Is that that's a part of the idea that we were looking at doing? Is it? Is it not? That's the that's yeah. the key factor. The more people you get together, that can raise those you know? frequencies and bring that up will be better. Right, but like, could the could the ETs not telepathically put messages into all of our minds globally and say, "Hey guys, time to wake up"? I, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Well, in my, in my yes. opinion of that, you're dealing with so many different varieties of aliens with different agendas, just like we have here. There are people here that have a different agenda. You know, and when yeah. we're talking about that agenda, uh, it all drives by different parts. So ET has different agendas also. Uh, we can be talking to uh, one while another version is trying to do something else. Uh, I do believe my personal opinion, and it's my own thought, that there is a... a a battle going on uh, that there is the ET that is here working uh, with uh, the government and there is also a better ET that is out here that wanted to give and offer um, spiritual guidance to us and when they come um, they abduct people and give them uploads and take them into that kind of factor uh, but uh, they also do it at great risk to themselves because of the fact that um, lately when we're talking about UFO cases and everything else, you see that there's uh, something else is coming. The military comes right afterwards, not for that kind of purpose where there might be another UFO. We've heard of battles that it seems like uh, one is chasing away another one. 
So if there is a good alien and a bad alien, uh, they're definitely at, at work and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're in a war. So it's good versus evil. You know, when you get to the bottom of the hole and that rabbit hole is so deep, it turns into be one, one thing versus another. And it's good versus evil every time. Right. Yeah, Kevin, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that, uh, Barry. And I've come to that conclusion. They haven't given me that information. But if you weigh up all the information we've been given, and we, we do have the ETs that are in direct contact with our governments that they've kept hidden, and uh, and then we have the other ETs that are contacting the people. And we, Melissa asked the question, why don't they give people telepathic communications? Well, I had an example of that uh, yesterday with my brother. He's never had any communication whatsoever. Uh, we've obviously had conversations about it. He now understands consciousness and shared consciousness in relation to how everything is connected. Uh, but yesterday I was speaking to him and he was given a download uh, about the, by the ET. He said, Kevin, he asked me a question and then he was given the answer. Uh, and it was about Donald Trump uh, when we hadn't touched on the subject at that moment in time. And he just relayed this information. And I said to him, where did you get that information from? And he said, um, he thought about it. He says, I don't know. He said, it just came into my head in an instant. I wasn't thinking about it. It was just came in. I said, oh, that's a download. And he knew about downloads because I explained them to him. And we'd had a conversation with a small group. Uh, my brother's a member of a book club in Holland. And I was invited to uh, uh, join in there. And they speak there, learning about consciousness. In fact, they just uh, read the book by Deepak Chopra. And they were discussing that particular book. And we moved further than that. We got into downloads and things like that, shared consciousness. So he was aware. And it was like a button being turned on or a light being turned on. So, yeah, in answer to your question, Melissa, the young brother, and I'm sure that's part of the communication as well, then they will be doing it with others. And they did tell me they will be contacting more individuals. And I suspect my brother Michael is an example of that now. So it will be interesting to see if he receives any more downloads. But once they realise, he was just fascinated by it. And uh, one of the group that we meet with uh, on a regular basis, uh, our Michael shared his story about the butterfly, which we had on this show a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah. he's been trying to connect with the butterflies with his daughter. And uh, last week he told us he was able to do it. He meditated, he went outside, there were some butterflies there, and he was able to walk up to them and uh, uh, he said, uh, tickle their wings, and they didn't fly off. He said, what an amazing feeling to com connect through consciousness, through the butterflies. But that's a very simplistic step in understanding consciousness itself. And once you realize that, and the uh, power and presence of meditation, telepathic communication, then we as a species will move forward. Yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing. I guess, I guess I just want to fast track. <laughs> you know, I just I, I want this planet to heal, and I want humanity to get out of all of this hatred and negative uh, state that it's in, and move to a, a loving and and peaceful. So I'm like, is there not like a drive through that we could get there a lot faster? That the ETs just kind of telepathically change everybody's mindset boy that would be so nice instead of waiting generations heck we may not even be alive when it finally happens you know it may be 50 to 100 years from now who knows um but yeah i mean it would be i don't know i just wanted to ask the question because i'm sure there's people watching that had that question and that's my role i think is i'm trying to think of what what are people thinking of as they're watching our show are they sitting there going well gosh you know, if they're if the ETs are so uh, so much more advanced, which they are, you know, is there not a way that they could just help us out at the snap of a finger? Yeah, that would be kind of cool if they could. But then again, you have to play into uh, like Barry was saying, all the different uh, ET races, and you know, I mean, there's so many different agendas. It's like, well, which one would win? And then. Then you can also argue, well, now you're going to be under their control. I, I mean, you know, it, it, it does kind of become a, um, 
well, another battle, I guess you could say. And I'm a, I'm in agreement with you, Barry. I think there's definitely some sort of a, a battle going on, uh, maybe a battle for control of Earth, uh, or maybe it's even a lot bigger than that because... I, uh, you know, I've read a lot of books, I, I've seen a lot of theories out there, and I think there's a shred of truth to all of that, and if in fact there is a battle going on for Earth right now, is it um, the good trying to take over the bad? Because a lot of people, and I'm kind of one of them, I kind of tend to think that we're almost a prison planet where, you know, we're, we're just being controlled and manipulated so much that I wonder if... Some good ETs are trying to overcome that. I don't know. Just going to put it out there. What do you guys think? Well, the, well, I think the, the, the uh, Dogon have uh, talked about to, this. I've talked about this uh, like three or four back episodes to, back. You know, we, we talked about the video earlier. She talks about contracts. And I mentioned it earlier. You know, yep. the first time that we had a meeting with them uh, with an alien it was a very human like race and they wanted to talk about spiritual awakening and give you that offering to be able to bring us to that I think what's come back is full circle that the, that these aliens have uh, has a group if you call it a council or whatever you would like to call it work all together and there's this other thing that works in this other direction it's, that we consider to be evil but I think that they've come back and they are trying to instill the spirituality of people. You know, I find it very interesting. You talked about your friend who was uh, reading um, uh, very religious, you know, and thinking that she'll never change her mind. Well, as you, just like anything, like Christ said, and it's one that will hear, will hear. So when you start to hear these things and you start to develop these things, then this is the things that will come out for other people to be able to listen to, you know, and to be able to make their own judgments. But I think that they are actually raising consciousness. I think they're raising the frequencies of people out here to be able to talk about it because some of us don't buy all the social conditioning. Do you ever notice that? You know, and I think we're all yeah. sitting around here with a group of abductees or somebody who has had ET uh, encounters. And when we do that, uh, we, we're, our, our belief system is different. It's a little bit on the different side because of the fact that uh, we don't buy what we're told. Inside right. of us, we beat a different clock we know that okay here's this information is and i think it's from them downloading it to us and protecting us and maybe reducing our frequencies to the point where uh we are not um uh, our frequencies kind of bounce off the other frequency the lower frequency so it yeah. doesn't affect us so it's much. Threatening. I, I think it, it's threatening to some people um i i think that's part of the problem I mean, not only are we a threat to the establishment because we're not buying into it, but I think we're a threat to those that don't understand it. You know, the greatest, uh, the greatest reason that people fear things is because they have no knowledge of it. So when you lack knowledge, then that equals fear. And how better to control people than the use of fear? Um, so, you know, I think that's part of the problem too, Barry, is that, uh, well... I've heard here lately that anytime we talk about universal consciousness, we're putting red flags out there on the internet, and we want to be probably squashed <laughs> because we are trying to help people raise their vibration, and when we raise our vibration, we become less controllable. Well, I, I think it all comes down to the part, and you've heard me say it a lot, and I think everybody else has heard it, uh, that it is definitely uh, about frequencies. Uh Plus, frequencies cause vibration. Vibration causes energy. And I think it all comes down to that point. And I think that if we expel that part of the problem and we continue to do that, I think the world will be a lot better place to be. Absolutely. You know, I, Absolutely. I, I think well, you that those can are tell, the things that happen. I, I have to say that everything and everyone are one of two things. They're either a drain or a radiator. Right. <laughs> When right. you're an energy exactly. drain, you suck the life out of everybody. When right. you're a radiator, you bring light and heat and warmth to everyone. So if you really yes. think about it, everything and everyone is either a drain or a radiator. And right. so I, I try to eliminate the drains and attract the radiators. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. 
Yeah. You, know? you want to try to so, keep all that. You don't need it to go in down the drain. <laughs> exactly. So. I don't want liquid plumber. I don't want to have to use that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. That's, uh, and that's that's a great analogy. Well, we just call them energy vampires to me. I mean, they're always been that way. They just suck you dry. And, you yeah. know, when uh, I got to tell you something, um, you know, my religious beliefs and all the whole nine yards go together. But I do believe that if people all get together in a positive manner, we can move mountains and we can do these things and change the world uh, and change people's thoughts. It doesn't take a uh, hundred thousand of them. I mean, it takes a few people getting together and moving forward and to change things. And uh, right now we need some change. We need some positive uh, attitude. So I hope that everyone uh, hears this can go, go towards that area. Uh, Nothing worse than a bunch of drains, if you will. <laughs> right? <laughs> pulling I mean, all of us down into the same thing really because it though. takes away from <laughs> us, too. It pulls all of our energies, you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kevin, I see you smiling down there. But isn't it true, though? I mean, it's either a drain or a radiator. Just saying. That's so. quite true, yeah. And again, I agree with Barry. It's all about frequency and. Uh, and uh, like I say, uh, the more radiators they have, the warmer we are, uh, the more conducive we are to one another. And, you know, I have friends who are negative and they, they drain you. They always look at the negative side of everything. And they have other friends that are so positive and they just radiate that, uh, that glow of consciousness, really, shared consciousness. And it raises everybody's vibrational frequency when we get together. Uh, you mentioned briefly about control. And obviously, you know that I'm from the UK. And just recently, they've changed their uh, rules and regulations again in relation to the COVID uh, pandemic. And uh, now they've got uh, restrictions. Uh, the pubs have to close. Uh, we're a nation of pubs in the UK. The pubs have to close at 10 o'clock. Because my understanding is now the virus comes out at 10 o'clock and then uh, attacks people. So uh, as long as you're in the pub before 10 o'clock and then it closes early, normally they close at 11, then you'll be okay. You can't have more than six people gathering in one place at one time. If you organize that, then you're liable to a fine of £10,000, uh, restricting that. But I know that Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, said last week or this week uh, that on Christmas Day, they're going to uh, relent on that and allow families to get together uh, just for Christmas Day, though. And then it'll be the control uh, concept again of only six people gathering together. So they've got these uh, curfews now, closing all the pubs at 10 o'clock. Uh, they open at 11 o'clock in the morning and normally close at 11 o'clock at night. So they're closing that hour earlier. So you can sit in the pub all day for, uh, say, 11 hours if you want, or 10 hours if you want. But you can't stay for that last hour now. We have to close the pub because of the virus. Well, that's part of the control system, part of the fear. And, and those of us who have cognitive thought, we work these things out. And, and again, my friend, I talked about Vax again. Uh, he's been following the COVID and he's believed most of the stuff that the government has told us over a period of time. But now that light bulb's come on and he thinks, this is not right. There's something not right here. So the longer these things go on, the more people will be awakened. And that's the key, being awakened to who we really are uh, as a species, as humanity. So uh, the, there might be a positive side to all this control and fear. It will awaken people. And if they're awakened, then they become like us, and then they'll they'll do their own research and, uh, and mix with like-minded people. So I think it's uh, uh, a, a positive side of the fear factor that the governments are trying to control us as individuals, and I don't think it's working. Right. Well, <laughs> I I was chuckling there for a minute because I'm thinking, well, do people turn into pumpkins after the eleven o'clock? <laughs> You know, does it magically become more contagious after 11? I don't know. I, I you know, it's kind of silly to me. Um, what's the mindset? Like, what what are you getting from, like, your friends and family over there, uh, Kevin? I mean, are people upset about that? I mean, six people? You can't, obviously, there's no weddings going on in the UK, which means there's probably going to be a dip in the... Uh, uh, baby boom population's probably going to go down, or maybe not if everybody's stuck in their house. <laughs> I 
I don't know. It depends on how you look at that. But if there's no weddings, no birthday parties, no, I mean, no nothing going on because six people, that's not very many people. Uh, what's everybody saying over there? I mean, are they upset? Are they, are they okay with it? Or they, do they not care? Or? Well, I, I'm seeing now a shift in my friends who have followed the narrative all the time and believed it uh, to move into the fact that, well, this is getting ridiculous now. And, and the more they uh, implement these uh, draconian, uh, rules and regulations, so called to protect us, then even the uh, people who are not open minded, they start thinking about it. And so I'm seeing a shift in some of my friends now, some that wouldn't go out, say, I'm not going out, I'm not going out at all. And now they're out. Uh, and I, 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 I joke with them, I say, You're going out without a mask? Oh my God, what are you doing? You know, six weeks ago, eight weeks, 10 weeks ago, they were locked down in their homes and they were frightened. They were terrified. Now they're venturing out. So uh, it just depends on what percentage that is of the population. And this is the UK. I know it's happening in other places. Uh, I think in Canada, they've, they've implemented some more rules and regulations. And uh, I think they've made it mandatory now to have these uh, vaccinations. So they've just passed a new uh, bill. So it's happening yeah, all around that's, us. That's happening all around us. Well, I mean, Edgar, I'm going to ask you this question because uh, I, I know what your opinion is. But, um, you know, I see people and, of course, it's pretty well known that I am not in support of face masks. Um, but yet I have to ask this question. When I do see people out and about and they have little babies and like little young toddlers of like two years old, they don't have face masks on them, which, by the way, good. I'm glad you don't because their cognitive development will be ruined if you put it on. Um, but I'm just curious, are those parents thinking that the babies are immune to it? I mean, because if they're wearing face masks, are they thinking that the kids are immune to it? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Well, part of it has to do with at least to listen to the pediatrician and not put a mask on because it does reduce the oxygen content flow to the brain. But I was just sitting here thinking about uh, the... Uh, way the people are uh, treating this and like in the collective consciousness they're starting to realize that oh just like in the uh, movie uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind when Richard Dreyfus told his friend get rid of the mask that, 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 and they got off the helicopter and they wound up witnessing the uh, intergalactic uh, ship coming into that base that they had uh, build up uh, around the Devil's Tower. And so this is much like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind where they used the sleeping gas and all the animals and stuff to make it look like it was anthrax when it was only a sleeping gas. And, uh, and they realized that they actually call, called their bluff and, and, and they, they were fine. Then they tried gassing them and uh, they didn't... Uh, succeed in uh, knocking them out because they were able to hide from the gas. And this uh, is where we're at now. That That's it's a great example. I actually forgot about that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. I can't believe I didn't think of it. But yeah, you're right. I love that. Um, that's a prime example of when you know, fear was actually implemented uh, in regards to a UFO landing, and uh, that that's interesting. Well, uh, we only have about two minutes here left, guys, so let's go around uh, and have everybody give a closing thought real quick. Barry, I'm going to start with you. Barry? Barry is in the twilight zone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Barry has been taken over, folks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, Kevin, I'll go to you. What's your final thought? Final thought will be I'm very positive for the future. Uh, I love what this uh, lady, Rebecca, said from uh, uh, Find the Lights. Uh, so, yeah, very positive for the future. Moving forward, the ETs are guiding us and contacting people. And uh, there are many of us speaking out now. So, uh, And as they say, it will come from the people. Very positive for the future. Very nice. Barry, we can't hear you, sweetie. So if you can do something with your volume, I'm not sure. Uh, all right, Edgar, I'm going to go to you. What's your final thoughts? Final thoughts are that the uh, 
we as a human race need to uh, wake up and uh, smell the coffee, smell the roses, and look at nature and not destroy any more of it because we're losing our uh, contact with nature by the destruction and not getting out amongst nature and uh, recharge, recharging our systems. Very we have to have Barry, that spiritual really connection. Can you say something, Barry? Because I lost you. Barry, do you have audio? Uh, well. You do. Okay. <laughs> I am barely hearing everybody, but I hope everybody uh, enjoyed the show. Thank you all for having us uh, on there today. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things for people to look at and think about, and I hope that the spiritual uh, energy does lift and we do uh, take consideration into what is going on in this world and making it a better place and raising the frequencies and raising everybody's knowledge to do it. Uh, if you're looking for information about what uh, we looked about, look for Project uh, Cigna back in 1953, look for Project Plato, uh, we'll give you some uh, information about some of the treaties and some of the other stuff. So hopefully it will be worth, worth your while to take a look at it. Absolutely. And of course, you guys can always uh, grab a copy of our book, Tap into Universal uh, Energy. We talk a lot about that. That's written by uh, Kevin, Edgar, and myself. And we talk about universal consciousness. Well, as I say every week, I want all of you to change what you know, and you're going to change where you go. I'm your host, Melissa Kennedy. Until next week, keep looking up.